Two teams, two cities, two legacies. This isn't just basketball, it's a clash of the titans, a story written in sweat, tears and championship banners. This is the battle for bragging rights, the showdown for supremacy, Lakers vs Celtics. What's up people, welcome back to our channel where we bring the most enticing news and breakdowns all happening in the NBA. The NBA's most esteemed organizations are the Celtics and the Lakers, known for their long-standing rivalry. Often considered the league's greatest, they have faced each other an unprecedented 12 times in the NBA Finals, with their initial encounter occurring in 1959 during the 1960s and 1980s. Both teams showcased their superiority, meeting in the final six times in the 1960s, thrice in the 1980s and twice at the turn of the millennium. The Lakers' rivalry is one of the most intense and storied rivalries in the history of professional sports. Spanning several decades, this fierce competition between two of the National Basketball Association's NBA most successful franchises, the Los Angeles Lakers and the Boston Celtics, has captivated fans and players alike. With its roots planted firmly in the early years of the NBA, this historic rivalry continues to shape the league's landscape today. In this essay, we will dive in to the history's key moments and cultural impact of the Lakers-Celtics rivalry, showcasing its paramount importance in the world of basketball. The Lakers and Celtics have both won the most championships in the NBA, with 17 each. The Lakers won 12 championships as the LA Lakers and 5 championships as the Minneapolis Lakers. Together. They have won 34 out of the 76 championships in NBA history, which is 45% of all championships. As of the 2023 offseason, the Celtics have a .5918 winning record and the Lakers have a .5915 winning record throughout their entire history. At the end of the 2022-23 season, the Celtics are the only team with a winning record against the Lakers. To truly understand the magnitude and significance of the Lakers-Celtics rivalry, we must explore its origins. The Boston Celtics, founded in 1946, were one of the NBA's original teams, whilst the Minneapolis Lakers, formed in 1947, joined the league a year later. During this period, the NBA was still known as the Basketball Association of America BAA, and its teams consisted primarily of players who were transitioning from the recently disbanded American Basketball League ABL. The Lakers, led by center George Mikan, quickly asserted their dominance in the early years of the league by winning two BAA championships in 1949 and 1950. Meanwhile, the Celtics, under the guidance of head coach Red Orbach, began adopting a fast-paced and team-centric style of play, laying the foundation for future success. It all began in the 1950s, a collision of East Coast grit and West Coast flair. The Celtics, a dynasty built on teamwork and defense versus the Lakers, fueled by individual brilliance and Hollywood glitz. Each clash a referendum on basketball itself. The rivalry between the Celtics and the Lakers became less intense after Larry Bird and Magic Johnson retired in the early 1990s. However, they faced off again in the NBA Finals in 2008, making their first meeting since 1987, and the Celtics emerged as the winners with a 4-2 series score. They had another showdown in the 2010 NBA Finals, which the Lakers won after a grueling seven-game battle. The 1960s witnessed the Celtics' unparalleled dominance, with Auerbach's squad winning a staggering eight consecutive championships. From 1959 to 1966, the Lakers, despite their regular successes, often found themselves on the losing end of the hand of the legendary Celtics, most notably in the 1962 NBA Finals, which became a defining moment of the rivalry. Just before that time, the Lakers made the decision to relocate their team to Los Angeles, thus laying the foundation for a fierce rivalry between them and the Boston Celtics. This move coincided with a significant era. In NBA history, both teams emerged as powerhouses in the league. The Celtics boast an exceptional lineup consisting of remarkable players like Bill Russell, Tom Heinsohn, John Havlech, Sam Jones, and their esteemed head coach, Red Auerbach. 
On the other hand, Los Angeles showcased their own set of talented individuals, including Elgin Baylor, Jerry West, Gail Goodrich, and their coach and general manager, Fred Schaus. However, despite the Lakers' formidable presence, it was undoubtedly the Celtics who reigned supreme throughout the 1960s, securing victory in the finals every single year except for 1967. The Lakers unfortunately fell short in their quest for glory during this decade. Interestingly, the Celtics and Lakers clashed head-to-head -head in six of these championship series, specifically in 1962. 63, 65, 66, 68, and 69. Regrettably for the Lakers, they were unable to overcome the Celtics' dominance and lost all six of these encounters. Nevertheless, it is worth noting that three of the aforementioned series, namely 1962, 66, and 69, fiercely contested by both teams, extended to a thrilling seven games. The Celtics' triumph over the Lakers in 1966 held particular significance as it marked an extraordinary achievement of eight consecutive championships, an unprecedented feat in the history of any North American professional sports team. The Celtics' dominance during this era solidified their status as one of the most successful franchises, leaving the Lakers yearning for taste of victory. In 1968, the Lakers were made a significant move by acquiring Wilt Chamberlain thereby intensifying the personal rivalry between him and Bill Russell. That had previously been a prominent aspect of the Celtics' 76ers rivalry. This acquisition fueled by the already heated competition between the Celtics and Lakers. During the 1968-1969 season, the Lakers demonstrated their dominance by achieving the best record in the Western Conference. Meanwhile, the aging Celtics faced difficulties and struggled to secure the fourth seed. Russell and Jones, both in the twilight of their careers, were giving it their all in their final seasons. Despite the odds stacked against them, the Celtics managed to cause upsets by defeating the Philadelphia 76ers and the New York Knicks, earning themselves a spot in the finals. The Lakers, enjoying home court advantages for the first time, began the series strongly by winning the first two games. However, the Celtics, displaying resilience and determination, bounced back and managed to win a thrilling Game 7 at the Los Angeles Forum. This victory defied the infamous prediction made by the Lakers owners, Jack Kent Cooke, who had anticipated a grand celebration for his team. Jerry West, despite being a part of the losing team, was named the Finals MVP. This recognition provided some solace, considering the Lakers' frustrating decade-long championship drought. The Lakers had faced multiple disappointments in the finals throughout the period, and all those losses were inflicted by their arch-rivals, the Celtics. The relationship between Russell and Chamberlain, once characterized by friendship despite the rivalry, turned into one of intense loathing. During the 1969 finals, the shift occurred when Chamberlain chose to remove himself from the crucial seven game, with six minutes remaining prompting Russell to accuse him of being a malignor and deserting the game when it seemed the Lakers would lose. Chamberlain, whose knee was so severely injured that he couldn't play during the offseason, eventually tore it in the following season. He was furious with Russell and viewed him as disloyal for a period of over 20 years. The two men did not communicate until Russell made an effort to reconcile, albeit without uttering a genuine apology. Remarkably, it was revealed that when Chamberlain passed away in 1999, Russell was the second person instructed to deliver the news, according to Chamberlain's nephew. The era 1970s. In the 1970s, both Celtics and Lakers achieved triumph, yet there was no opportunity for a face-off between the two squads. At the beginning of the decade, the Lakers experienced ongoing difficulties in the NBA Finals, resulting in a defeat against the New York Knicks in the 1970s. Nonetheless, the team managed to recover two years later by achieving a remarkable 33-game winning streak in the regular season, a record that remains unbeaten. Furthermore, they triumphed in the 1972 NBA Finals, securing their first championship in Los Angeles, defeating the Knicks once again. Interestingly, this victory marked Jerry West's sole NBA title during his tenure as a Laker great. In the subsequent year, the Lakers found themselves facing the Knicks once more in the 1973 NBA Finals and unfortunately experienced defeat. Although they did not reach the finals again in this particular decade. Their fortunes changed in 1975 with the acquisition of Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. In 1974, the Celtics emerged victorious in the NBA Finals with coach Tom Heinsohn and players Dave Cowens, Paul Silas and Jojo White at the helm. They achieved the same feat once more in 1976. 
Neither of the teams achieved another championship until the 80s. Nevertheless, the groundwork for the revived Celtics-Lakers competition of the 1980s was actually established in college basketball during the late 1970s. In 1978-79 NCAA season, Magic Johnson led Michigan State to the championship game of the NCAA tournament, where they faced Indiana State University guided by senior Larry Bird in what became the most watched college basketball match ever. Michigan State triumphed over Indiana State with a score of 75-64, and Johnson was honored as the most outstanding player of the Final Four. Johnson went on to be selected by the Lakers while Bird joined the Celtics. The personal rivalry formed by these two basketball legends during college transferred to their NBA careers and reignited the long-standing competition between the two franchises they represented. The Magic and Bird Era Fast forward to the 80s, a decade that saw the rivalry reach new heights. Magic Johnson, the charismatic point guard for the Lakers, and Larry Bird, the legendary forward of the Celtics, became the faces of their respective franchises. The battles between Showtime and the Boston Garden brought a theatrical element to the rivalry, captivating fans worldwide. Magic mentioned that when the fresh schedule was released annually, his immediate attention would be drawn to the games against the Celtics. He considered those particular games as the most significant, while the remaining 80 were of lesser importance. Likewise, Bird revealed that he would begin his day by examining the box scores exclusively to see Magic's performance, dismissing any other details as irrelevant. In 1980, the Philadelphia 76ers were defeated by the Showtime Lakers in the NBA Finals, marking the initiation of the Lakers' dominance. The next season, the Celtics, led by the trio of Bird, McHale, and Parrish, emerged victorious in the 1981 NBA Finals against the Houston Rockets. The 76ers triumphed over the Celtics in the 1982 Eastern Conference Finals, crushing any hopes of a potential rematch with the Lakers. Nevertheless, what made the last game of that series significant in the rivalry? was the chance from Boston fans urging the 76ers to defeat their beloved Celtics and emerge victorious against the Lakers. Despite this spirited encouragement, the 76ers succumbed to the Lakers in the 1982 NBA Finals, where they were under the leadership of new head coach Pat Riley. However, the tables turned in the following year when the 76ers managed to conquer the Lakers and claim victory in the 1983 NBA Finals. Furthermore, the 1982-83 season marked the rookie year of James worthy uh, future Hall of Famer for the Lakers in this renowned rivalry. The Celtics would get a new head coach in Casey Jones, who was also a former Celtics player and two teams finally had their long-awaited rematch in the 1984 NBA Finals, a grueling seven-game series that had many memorable moments, including a 1-3-7-104 blowout in Game 3 that led Bird to call his Celtic teammates sissies. The Kevin McHale takedown of Laker forward Kurt Rambis, which led to increased physical aggression. By both teams, the sweltering heat of the infamously unair-conditioned Boston Garden in Game 5 and Cedric Maxwell's 24-point performance in Game 7, the Celtics went on to win in seven games, increasing their record of final series victories against the Lakers 8-0. The following year, the Lakers finally had their revenge, winning the 1985 NBA Finals by taking Game 6 in Boston Garden, becoming the first team to win an NBA championship in that arena before Golden State Warriors repeated it in 2022. Lakers owner Jerry Buss famously remarked that this has removed the most odious sentence in the English language. It can never again be said that the Lakers have never been beaten by the Celtics. Many journalists speculated that the Johnson-Bird rivalry was captivating because it symbolized various other contrasts. These included the rivalry between Lakers and Celtics, the clash between Hollywood glamour, known as Lakers Showtime, and the Boston hardworking mentality, the Celtic pride, and the division between black and white fans during the 80s. Race played a significant role, with white fans often supporting the mostly white Celtic teams, while black fans admired the Lakers' more athletic style of play. The city of Boston was divided as Magic Johnson shared an anecdote about a black fan who informed him that most black Bostonians cheered for the Lakers whenever they played against the Celtics. Larry Bird, also known as the Great White Hope, was seen by the people of Boston as a representation of their values. They viewed him as the final stronghold in a game that had become predominantly black over the past two decades. However, Bird never embraced this narrative, rejecting the label and solely focusing on his desire to win. Despite 
despite their fierce rivalry on the court, Magic and Bird are the utmost respect. They showcase on a national platform how people from different races can compete, be rivals and still coexist. A 1984 Converse advertisement for its weapon line of basketball shoes, which was endorsed by both Bird and Johnson, emphasized the perceived contrast between the two players. In the commercial, Bird is seen practicing alone on a rural basketball court when Johnson arrives in a stylish limousine and challenges him to a one-on-one -on -one match. Despite their on-court shoot rivalry, the two actually became friends after filming the commercial together. During a period in which the NBA experienced a declining viewership, the Celtics-Lakers rivalry led by Bird and Johnson played a role in attracting national attention. The seventh game of their first final matchup set a new record with 40 million viewers on CBS. Consequently, CBS began focusing more on the Celtics and the Lakers, scheduling doubleheaders featuring both every weekend. The presence of these two legendary players helped the league gain a whole new generation of fans. The intense competition between Bird and Johnson and their respective teams contributed to the league's success throughout the decade. Brian Gumbel acknowledged that Magic and Larry saved the NBA, while sports journalist Larry Schwartz of ESPN argued that Johnson and Bird prevented the NBA from going bankrupt. It is worth noting that either the Lakers or Celtics appeared in every NBA final series during the 1980s. Numerous basketball analysts also acknowledged the impact of Bird and Magic on transforming the style of play in the game. They offered fresh insights, such as the importance of making additional passes. These two players possessed extraordinary basketball knowledge and exuded a style that emphasized skills and dedication. Jerry West expressed his belief that Bird and Magic undeniably brought about a beneficial influence onto the league. In the 1990s, the Lakers were the only team to make it to the finals, but they lost to the Chicago Bulls. This marked a change in the NBA, as the Lakers and Celtics became less successful while the Bulls won six titles. However, both teams faced personal tragedies. Magic Johnson announced he had HIV and retired, and Reggie Lewis died of a heart attack. In 1994, both the Lakers and Celtics failed to make the playoffs for the first time in NBA history. The Lakers started rebuilding in 1996 by obtaining Kobe Bryant from the Charlotte Hornets. They also signed Shaquille O'Neal that year. In 1998, the Celtics drafted Paul Pierce, who was a Lakers fan. The Lakers hired Phil Jackson as head coach in 1999. The 2000 rivalry renewed. Fast forward, the Celtics became successful in the 2007-08 season with Alan Garner and Pierce, along with Rondo, the big three. They had the best record in the league and reached the NBA Finals. The Lakers also made it to the Finals with Gasol's addition. The Lakers also won regular season games on Christmas Day, including 2009 NBA Finals. The Celtics, on the other hand, were eliminated by the Orlando Magic. The summer before the 09-10 season, Phil Jackson ran into Paul Pierce and told him, get it back, we want to meet you in the finals. The Lakers ended the season with the West best record, while the Celtics would enter the playoffs as a number four seed. Build up for a rematch began, with the Lakers taking a 2-0 lead over the Phoenix Suns in the Western Conference Finals, with the chant of we want Boston erupting in the Staples Center. Likewise, chant of beat LA erupted in the TD Gardens as the Celtics took a commanding 3-0 lead over Magic in the Eastern. Conference Finals. Both teams fended off late series surges from their opponents, but won their respective series 4-2, setting up a rematch in the 2010 NBA Finals. The 2010 series was filled with many memorable moments. One of these was the performances from Bryant, who led in points for six out of seven games. Another was Ray Allen's record-breaking eight three-pointers in Game 2 of the Finals. In Game 3, Derek Fisher played a crucial role in leading his team to victory and was even seen shedding tears. Game 4 contested with Glenn Davis screaming so loudly he drooled while Nate Robinson rode on his back. The Lakers displayed dominance in Game 6 and closely fought Game 7, became the most watched NBA game since Michael Jordan's retirement in 1998. The victory in Game 7 was the first time the Lakers had defeated the Celtics, bringing their total number of championships to 16. The Celtics brought in Shaquille O'Neal for the 2010-11 season to take the place of the injured Kendrick Perkins, intensifying the rivalry, introduced the Shaq-Kobe feud to the Celtics-Lakers dynamic. 
Ray Allen achieved the milestone of becoming the all-time leader in the total three-point field goals made in NBA. However, both the Lakers and Celtics were eliminated in the second round of the playoffs that year, the Dallas Mavericks and Miami Heat respectively. In the following year, they were once again eliminated by the eventual 2012 NBA final participants, the Oklahoma City Thunder and Miami Heat respectively, given the disbanding of Boston's Big Three and expected changes. In the roster, some believe the 11-12 NBA season marked the end of the current Celtics rivalry. Tying Championship Titles During the 2020 playoffs, the Celtics made their way to the Eastern Conference Finals where they faced off against the Miami Heat. Unfortunately, they were defeated in six games, preventing a long-awaited Lakers-Celtic matchup, which would have been their first since 2010 NBA Finals. Meanwhile, the Lakers emerged victorious by defeating the Heat in the 2020 NBA Finals, ultimately clinching the NBA Championship. Rondo, who played a significant role in the Lakers' championship victory, achieved a remarkable feat by becoming the second player in NBA history, following Clyde Lovelett to secure titles with both the Celtics and Lakers. After two seasons, the number of players from both teams on the NBA 75th anniversary team totals 35. However, the Lakers were unable to secure a playoff spot for the 17th time in the past nine seasons. In contrast, the Celtics made it to the NBA Finals for the first time in 12 years. They achieved this by defeating the Brooklyn Nets in the conference first round, a rematch from the previous year. The reigning championships, Milwaukee Bucks in the conference semifinals, a rematch from 2019, and ultimately the Miami Heat in the conference finals in 2020. The Celtics aims to clinch their 18th title in order to surpass the Lakers for the most titles, but they loss to the Golden State Warriors in six games. In the 22-23 season, both teams reached the conference finals, but their hopes for a potential final matchup were dashed. The Denver Nuggets' eventual NBA champions swept the Lakers and the Celtics, were defeated by the Miami Heat in a seven-game series with a current record of 17-5 in the NBA Finals. The Celtics are still tied with the history of the Lakers of the most title NBA players. The saga of the Lakers vs Celtics, a rivalry that has woven itself into the fabric of NBA history, from the early battles of Meekan and Russell to the Magic Bird era and beyond. The rivalry is a living, breathing entity that continues to capture the imagination of fans across generations. If you enjoyed the deep dive into basketball history, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more content. Until next time.